Alright guys, this is Dograft and welcome to another tank review and today we're looking at the VK3001P, the German tier 6 medium tank. In this video I will be telling you guys everything you need to know about this tank and I have to say I really do like this tank but it has a lot of disadvantages. In this video I am going to tell you guys about the gun of the tank, the mobility and its armor and I will of course show a replay of my VKP and as you can see there's also a mark of excellence on it so expect a good replay. So first of all the VK301P which I'm going to call the VKP in this review is the one of the four yeah medium tanks in tier 6 in the German tech tree it has some really good gun capabilities the armor is not very good at all but it has some troll parts as you can see and the mobility where we're gonna talk about now. The mobility of the tank is quite good in some points and quite bad in the other. The top speed limit is really good, 60 kilometers an hour. That's really nice in this tank. You can really relocate quickly on the battlefield if you need to go to another place to carry games and as such things you will really see the mobility and work in the replay but there's one disadvantage as well the traverse speed is really low this tank won't be able to turn really quickly yeah I think that the hull turns quicker than the turret but that is my opinion I'm not sure if that is true but I've got a 100% crew in this vehicle so that might be the case why the hull turns quicker than the turret the turret also has 28, yeah, traverse speed a second, degrees of, yeah, degrees a second, which is also not very high. So sometimes you have to combine the traverse speed of your tracks and your turret to be able to turn your turret around really quickly if there's an enemy behind you who is shooting your ass. <laughs> so that's really important thing to know about this tank. So the gun of this tank is a 88 millimeter yeah, gun. It fires 8.7 rounds a minute, which is really good. Then it's a really high DPM, of which every shell does 220 alpha damage. So that gives you a really high DPM. This is one of the advantages of this tank. That's why I like this tank so much. It has a good rate of fire and a good damage for each tier, which can shave off almost one third of the health of the average yeah, tier six tank. So that's a good punch for the enemy tank. And the really high DPM, you can punish them, hitting them with the high damage roll and you can decimate them with your DPM. But there are two disadvantages on this gun. The penetration, as you can see, is pretty low for each tier. But you can make up for the bad penetration using your mobility to flank your enemies. So that's not really a problem. I didn't really have a problem with this penetration getting towards my Tiger P, but that doesn't matter anymore. The accuracy is also pretty low. So that means that your shell can waft pretty easily. So don't expect all your shots to go straight or you have to aim for 2.3 seconds to get the gun as accurate as possible but don't forget 0.38 accuracy is not very high Okay, so for the armor of this tank, I've jumped us into Tank Inspector, which is a really nice program where you can see all the armor values, even the angled sides of armor. So let's take a look of this tank. Let's put the armor plates here. Well, first of all, this tank isn't really well armored at all. As you can see, there's only 75 millimeters on the front of the tank, and you can see the real millimeters there are in this box and you can see the armor values of the tank in this box so this is 75 millimeters and in this angle this gives us 76 millimeters so this is not really good angled sight this 
is though. This is only 60 millimeters, but it is really nice sloped. So if you are engaging this tank frontally, don't try, yeah, avoid hitting this yeah, sloped plate here. This plate though is not really well armored and not really well sloped, so you can hit this as well. This is only 80 millimeters. Also, this plate here is almost straight up, so this would also be a problem. 75 millimeters on this front here. There's a small plate which gives you a bit more armor, 115, but this is the most armor this whole tank has. Oh no, that's not true. Not true. Forget that. But avoid hitting this if it is angled like this. So this will give a really bit better armor value if you don't have such a high penetration. Avoid hitting this plate if it is angled. If you have it like this, then it won't be even a problem to penetrate. These edges on the side are really well angled as well with the 75 millimeters of armor. So avoid hitting these side plates as well. As you can see, KV-1S will sometimes also have problems with penetrating these side plates. So, second, the side of the tank is not really well armored, only 60 millimeters here. But beneath the tracks, there is a bit of spaced armor of the tracks, which gives you a bit, yeah, pretty nice armor values here. So you can also try to bait your enemy shooting your tracks. That will also, yeah, most of the time be a uh, bounce if you angle the, if you if you side trip the tank like this, then it will be an automatic ricochet, as you can see. But this will also be a ricochet then, but it won't be hard to pen. So watch out with your angling. So the back of the tank is not really impressive at all. Only 40 millimeters, nothing sloped. Not, yeah, there's a bit angled here, but I don't think that one of tanks count this as an angle. So don't even think about where to hit the bum of the tank, so just shoot it. Well, now we're getting into the turret. The turret is a bit special though. World of Tanks stats only say that it has only 100 millimeters of armor, but as you can see, there are some troll parts here. Some troll parts which gives you over 200 millimeters of armor. So the turret can be tr quite troll sometimes. So if you are engaging this tank, just try to shoot its turret and it will be a 50-50 chance of penetrating the turret. So better aim for its hull. Yeah, the side and the back of the turret are not impressive at all. Only 81 millimeters. There are some weak spots here, but I don't think you even want to bother shooting those weak spots. Most of the tier five and six tanks have more than 100 penetration. So won't even bother about shooting this. Also don't even bother about shooting the cupolas on here. The commander's hatch. The tank is really armored, so don't even risk shooting there. But as you can see, there's also one more disadvantage of the turret. The turret has really low armor values on top of the tank. So if you will hit the top of the tank, like in this angle, it will even pen how much armor does it has. It only has 28 armor millimeters of armor on top, and even angled in this angle, it only gives you 43 millimeters. So it's a lucky shot though to hit this, but it will penetrate. So, techniques you can use to increase your armor. Techniques that I found worked really well. Angle the tank at 35 degrees. This is the best angle to hope and make balances happen as you can see. This is the best angle you can get. Oh no, a bit more. A little bit back. 35 degrees I think is the best angle. This is 45, but you can play a bit with it. See, this is a ricochet. This is a ricochet almost. So 35 degrees is the best angle. What you can do if you are engaging a KV-1S or so, with a tank with really high penetration, you can wiggle the tank like this. We are driving towards him. So that makes it really hard for him to aim at your, yeah, at your tank, actually. He might be aiming for the side of the tank, as example. And you're wiggling the tank like this, then he will be really pretty much panic because he doesn't really know where to hit you because you are confusing him making this movement and then he might shoot at the side of the tank and by wiggling it like this it will increase the chance that it will bounce because if you make a wiggle and he shoots the shot now and you wiggle this way then the shot will of course bounce off same with your turret 
if somebody is aiming for your turret or if or if you are hull down fighting your enemy what you can do is you can drive backwards and forwards or sideways like this so that it will be really hard for him to aim at your turrets yeah, weakest points so those are two techniques you should keep in mind Alright guys, so here we are driving on Brunsburg on fire. As you can see this is a great matchup for this tank, but it is only 44% win chance, so I really have to carry this game. So I decided to go to a really aggressive position right there and E6, but you can immediately meet some dangerous tanks, so here I have to keep an eye. There's a leopard, I immediately angle my armor, take a shot. And engage him again. This clip is done. I immediately pull back to avoid enemy fire, which might be coming from the hill, but it didn't happen. But as you can see, I immediately took out that leopard with my great DPM. And I angled my side towards him to increase the amount of bounces that his clip could give to me. So right now I'm just waiting for this ELC AMX to spot any enemy vehicles who might be back there. Doesn't seem like there are any. But there might also be a lot of TDs camping in this bush location there. As you can see there's an M8A1 tier 4 tank just right behind me and I tried to take shots. But there you can see M481 is a great player. He dodged my shot completely. Well done to him. But as you can see, there's still no enemy spot on this flank, so I decide to go. Decide to put pressure up on their base because it's a really low win percentage and I really have to do something to win this game. As you can see, there's a T28, the Matilda Black Prince got shot, so I try to take shots. And there you can see a really bad example of the accuracy of this tank. But I also didn't aim my shot, so might be logical that that one missed so now I am just trying to put pressure up on their base oh no I'm not yes I am I'm trying to kill any tank destroyers who might be back yeah camping back there but as you can see there's also KV-1 spotted yeah he's last been spotted back there in that location so I first want to go to kill him so he won't be able to get side shots off of me when I am putting pressure up on their base but there's an AFK Hetzer, which is a nice snack for me. And artillery steals my kill. But now, I've certainly been spotted by that Hetzer, so I am waiting behind this house because the KV-1 might be aiming at me now. I really want to get the ambush on him before he can uh, get the ambush on me, so that's why I waited there. You can see there's the KV-1. Nice aimed shot into his yeah, turret and he's dead time to move on now I decide okay let's go back to the base because we've lost the town I have to support the Matilda Black Prince because he's not very mobile in speed and I have the speed so I decided to go back as you can see there's a T-34 advancing through that yeah line over there I'm thinking okay let's kill this guy don't want him to flank my team so aim aim there we go shot through the front of the tank wasn't fully aimed but it did went in so okay now I think there's two tanks going to defend the base and the artillery is also still there so I decide let's put pressure up on their base to try to let the enemy retreat towards their base to come after me instead of killing the artillery and my teammates. But there's a there's a Hellcat. He's facing the wrong way, so I take a shot. Damaged. Luckily, the artillery or another teammate hit him first, so I kill him. There's the Hetzer. I saw him get spotted, so I stopped and he hit my track. I'm getting hit from left, so now I think, okay, let's stay angled. And there's the artillery who hit me, so now I know where he is. 
He's back there in the alley line, in the line back there. Oh, he took a shot again, so now I certainly know where he is. So I keep my armor angled with my spaced armor towards him, and I go after him. Using these bushes to make the ambush happen on him. There you go, there he is. He's been spotted. Side scraping him out now. Hoping he doesn't splash me. He misses. And now I'm going to make a big donkey play because I knew I had to carry this game and I was a bit... Yeah, there we go. I rammed the artillery but you shouldn't have argued that I should have done that because that cost me... Yeah, a small chunk of my health which I might have needed. And there's a headser on my left who luckily got spotted now. And now I should have wiggled, used the wiggle technique, but I didn't. I was trying to keep my armor angled, but I should have wiggled. Luckily, the headser bounced on me. I really thought that the battle would end for yeah there th for me because I didn't angle really well. But I had to close the distance towards him. Well, now, the KV-1S on the enemy team is low on health, but also has a Top Gun medal. Yeah, also can be... Yeah. Only one of us can have Top Gun now, so I have to kill him to get the Top Gun medal. So, there's two enemy tanks capping, so I don't want to delay the game. I want to go in there and kill them as quickly as I can. I have to reset the cap. Luckily, he's facing the wrong way. I took a risk by aiming long there, but I wanted to make sure that this shot went in. And there's the SU. It was really important that the KV-1S died there. He really could have ended the battle there for me. This is only a tier 4 tank. But I do have to think about my engagement now. Because he can kill me in one shot. I can kill him in one shot. And now I close the distance. I'm closing the distance to him to make it harder for him to kill me. But I did only go when he was unspotted. Don't go when he is spotted. Because you are driving. Your accuracy is shit. And he can easily take a shot at you. And there we go. Satisfying moment. I killed the last remaining enemy tank. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no medal for standing alone against two enemy tanks. But that's not really special as well. Yeah, it's not really special. But as you can see, the SU didn't really stand a chance against me. Because his gun is, is mounted in the middle of its tank. It doesn't have a really big gun arc. So, I would have seen the side of his tank earlier than... He would have seen my tank. So, and it was angled well. So, I think he did penetrate his. Yeah, he would have penetrated his shot. But that's it for the battle. And as you can see, A kills. So, that gives us another Redley Walters medal. What is a really nice result. So, let's take a look at the post game stats. So, A Stanker badge. And as you can see, the mark of excellence next to it. Was really happy to pick that up. My second mark of excellence. And of course, the Redley Walters medal for killing eight enemy tanks. The Top Gun medal for killing six enemy tanks. Defender medal for defending the base above a the yeah defense points. And a Spartan medal for bouncing a shot when I had less than 10% of my health remaining. But unfortunately, we did not get the high caliber medal because look at the KV-1S on the enemy team. He did 300 more damage than I did. So well played to him. I didn't do a lot of damage this battle, which yeah didn't give me the high caliber medal. And I got 1053 base experience, which got me the Ace Tanker medal, where I was really happy about to pick up because... I had around 20 battles played in this tank where I got the first class medal and never got the ace tanker so I was really happy to pick that up. So guys I think that's it for the VKP review. Please leave a like as I did put a lot of time in making this video. I hope you liked this review, I hope it was being useful to you and I hope I've told everything you need to know about this vehicle. So guys that's it for the review, hope you liked it. See you later guys.